What's good, y'all? Will Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out. It should not be this way in WWE. Uh, I guess this video is talking about what's going on in the in the women's division on the main roster, and uh, people have had their fair share of criticisms of the women's division, and so have I. So I want to see what this individual has to say. I'm gonna make myself smaller so y'all can see the channel. Uh, actually, I'm gonna have to make myself disappear real quick. Hold on. The channel goes by symbol wrestling uh i'm gonna link down the original video so y'all definitely can go subscribe to him check him out and we're gonna see what this person has to say about the women's division in wwe there's a bit of a dilemma when it comes to the women's division in wwe across both raw and smackdown the top storylines for the women right now seem to be either Liv and Rhea for Judgment Day, Street Trash, the Terror Twins, <laughs> and on SmackDown, you do have Naomi, Bailey, Nia Jax, Tiffany Stratton mixing it up for quite a while now. But as I look across WWE and both main roster shows, yes, a lot of women on the programs do get featured, but I don't feel like they ever get a lot of story with a lot of consequence. You're either mm. wrapped up in the big title scene or you're not doing much of anything else and some of these stories feel like they've been going on for a long that, that that is fair that he has a fair point outside of just the title scene that's it <laughs> there's there's that there's really nothing else going on for some of these ladies man on time now bianca and jade consistently just going back and forth with the women's tag titles against yeah. numerous opponents bailey won the women's title at wrestlemania which was an awesome moment but after winning the title i didn't feel like billy did much of anything else she did as women's champion i'm really enjoying it i like her character i think she's very great as a big dominant heel me chin is getting more tv time which is great to see yeah Chelsea green is one of my standouts across any show because she's just hilarious but something's missing for me because while on the men's side it's not always perfect either yeah WWE has across their shows has a lot to improve on but the men's feuds and storylines a lot of the times go beyond the title belts which is what i like to see it's not and that's he makes a very great point the men's side of things when it comes to feuds and stuff it's not all revolving around the belts i mean we have the situation obviously with drew and cm punk prime example that didn't involve the belts in a sense of course drew screw i mean cm punk screwing drew out of multiple title opportunities yes but that was more of a personal beef within themselves look what they're doing with bronson reed going on this rampage that had really nothing to do with the title belt itself um and he started packing up people and now we're gonna get a few with bronson reed and seth rollins like these other feuds that are going on oh smackdown prime example would be carmelo hayes and andrade they're having these uh back and forth matches that have been pretty good and now we're gonna get uh, pretty much a game seven match to see who's going to be the number one contender for the united states championship but before you know, it wasn't really about the United States Championship per se. It was just them trying to see who's the better wrestler. Like, those you need. You need views that don't always involve titles because you can build some you can build up each you know the characters within that feud and then eventually they get into the title picture scene. Not always about the world title. You have guys like Drew and Paul. There we go. Yes, it's rooted in the World Heavyweight Championship and Drew getting screwed over, but it is such a long blood feud between these guys. And I think that's really interesting. The White Six and American Mave, it's not about the title. And when it comes yeah. to Rhea and Liv Morgan specifically, it seems like their feud is going to go for a very long time. It could possibly just culminate at WrestleMania. Dominic Mysterio finally eating a riptide. Rhea winning the world title once again, reclaiming it against Liv Morgan. But do you ever notice, and this goes for the men's side too, do you ever notice that when they become big superstars and title holders, uh, they, they don't wrestle very much anymore when has Rhea or Liv wrestled on Monday Night Raw respectfully mm -hmm. they don't even have like tag, tag team matches on Raw it's just that's a fair point and segments where there's brawls I totally understand let's keep everybody healthy they can wrestle for a very long time it's great that they're not going to be grinding it out 320 days a year but when the rest of the women on both Raw and Smackdown aren't in anything that's very meaty or captivating you're kind of left feeling well this doesn't really matter women's yeah. television also I feel is a bit of an issue and while it has gotten a lot of TV time and it has gone on to be on the PLEs from time to time too it's allowed Jay to develop her character and her skill set and I am waiting for that moment when we are going to inevitably 
inexplicably get Bianca and Jade to go head to head with each other. Yeah. The tag division for the women always feels like it's just makeshift. They have a lot of factions. They got a lot of tag teams. Pure fusion collective. Yeah. And you the studs. <laughs> That's what we call them still. I don't care what they say. <laughs> You've got the damage control. Unholy Union. Jade and Bianca. There are a lot of teams, but they never feel like they're doing much of anything. And because those tag titles are cross brand, on one hand, it is a good thing because well, you can see fresh matchups, but on the other hand, yeah, you, you just kind of feel like, okay, now Jade and Bianca are going to go over to Raw to fight damage control. They win a number one contenders match. So now let's have fight. There's no interpersonal stories. There's no mm. element of understanding who these characters are, the dynamics of their faction in pure fusion collective why they're <laughs> on the same page why yeah. they are best buddies why they want the tag titles no animosity between bianca and jade ever you contrast that with i don't know the bloodline uh -huh. and yes, bloodline over the four plus years is the cinema for wwe but it goes to show that wwe has the ability to produce these things at a very high level they can they definitely can do that with the ladies too and give us interesting characters and interesting dynamics and that not everything is black and white and cut and dry where it is just we are a babyface tag team and we go and fight for a title they don't always connect they sometimes clash it creates more intrigue chelsea green piper niven i enjoy them a lot but I feel like they've just been spinning their wheels for so long and i'm happy that chelsea gets a lot of tv time but it's not going to result in anything of consequence mm -hmm. there's been a long-standing rumor that wwe is going to bring in women's mid-card titles now what do you think about that good mm. idea bad idea do you think it will make it yeah here's the thing if you're gonna do it if you're gonna do that uh, i'm for it Only if, only if we're going to get more, we got to get more feuds. We got to start building up more of these other ladies to be taken as credible. If we're going to do that, if we're going to have the tag, tag uh, champs, uh, the, you know, the women tag champs, if we're going to have that, and then we have two head championships, if we're going to add one more like mid card women's championship, other women definitely have to be more involved in a sense of not only just for the title, but you have to build up other women in that, in I guess, in that mid card division to be credible, to get people to care. That's what I mean. Because, yes, you can make another title. All right, cool. Someone holds that title, but you can still be in the same situation we've been in where outside of the people that are holding the titles, everybody else is just kind of there it needs to be okay they're not holding the title but they got a good program going on with somebody they got a good issue they got some beef or these two ladies are trying to see who's the best and that can lead once again to a mid-card championship or to a head championship so i'm for it but it needs to be a situation where the ladies are still doing stuff outside of those titles so to make you care more so we'll see difference do you think it's too many belts or do you think that would also just end up being kind of an afterthought for a little while where okay we gave the women mid-card titles now they can go fight for that and it still results in just matches on smackdown that are eight minutes long but they're fighting for a u.s title i yeah. would personally hope that mid-card titles if they do come for the women it would rejuvenate the divisions and it would give more superstars more stuff to actually work and fight towards but i do worry that WWE wouldn't give it the time of day that it kind of needs. We've seen LA Knight with the United States Championship main event SmackDown before the PLEs. That's awesome. We did see Meech and Mia Yim and Nia Jax in, in a street fight. And that was really fun too. Mm -hmm. I think women's mid-card titles could be a really good thing. I think it could help out a lot of the women. I'd love to see Chelsea Green or Meech in with the Intercontinental Championship. Fatal four-way matches, triple threat matches, United States title gauntlet match. 
You get Ivy Nile in there. You can get Maxine Dupree. But the point is, is that there is a lot of female talent across both brands. Yeah. And I think you could be doing more with them with mid-card titles. Also with Raw and SmackDown, Raw being on Netflix next year, being a three-hour juggernaut, SmackDown is going to be three hours as well. Reportedly just for like a short term until like mm -hmm. the summertime, but you never know. They might make it a permanent thing for three hours on SmackDown on USA for 2025. But regardless, if you've got more TV time and you do have more talent constantly coming in, you gotta keep things fresh and interesting. Can't always just put them into factions and tag teams and hope for the best. Yeah. Mid card titles could do a lot. It'd be great for SmackDown to open up with the United States Championship match for the women. But that's where I go back to one of the main problems I see with women's wrestling in WWE on the main roster. There's nothing else compelling happening outside of the title scene. I mm -hmm. know that so many of the teams are featured. They are on TV every week. You have four women right now going for the women's championship. I get it. And there's only so much time you can spread across all these shows and programming. And we did see cool stuff where you get like Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus. But yeah. I was worried with WWE, especially nowadays when I notice their main title scenes. If for example, on the women's world title scene, you're not in that title scene and you're not re and live right now. You're not yeah. in that many segments. I get it. Liv and Rhea Ripley, Rhea Ripley especially, extremely popular. One yeah. of their most popular superstars across men and women's divisions. Yeah. I love it. But if you're not going for the title, you're not getting multiple segments a night. It'd be cool to see Final Testament and Scarlet actually wrestle. Scarlet can wrestle. She's a good wrestler. It'd be cool to see her in a personal storyline rivalry with somebody. Make pure fusion. And I, I, I get what he's saying. Like, outside of that, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Other than... You know, insert tag team here that we've seen some variational form of for the past few weeks. There's like, there's nothing personable, no, no other feud outside of the title division, like the title matches in the in the women's division that people can really sink their teeth into. Collective, not a losing faction after maybe like it's been a month have they been together they don't have any wins and on the women's side and to contrast it with the men's side the men's side you get meteor promos and the cinematic stuff yeah and i get it that's that seems to be reserved for the tippy top they're going to put that investment into the likes of roman reigns and cody rhodes for those big cinematic moments i get it but wouldn't it be neat to give Rhea and Liv something like that where they were going face to face somewhere and it was all letterbox and four by three. And they had the really cool <laughs> produced music and everything in there. <laughs> more weight to the feud. And additionally, premium live events, pay-per-views are shorter and shorter now. I like having three hour pay-per-views, the PLEs, where you're going to get a handful of matches and that space being reserved for the biggest storylines, the ones they have been focusing on the most and giving those matches a lot of time. So we end up seeing five, six, matches i don't think they've even broken seven matches on a card unless it's like SummerSlam. but there's mm -hmm. goods and bads with that the good side more time for matches let them breathe tell really compelling stories it's rarefied air so if you're on a ple card your match really is important yeah and they're making raw and smackdown go homes especially smackdown go homes be almost like pre-shows where you're typically now going to get a title match which is a cool thing too, because if you are in Berlin and you're going to SmackDown and to the PLE, you're gonna mm -hmm. see a lot of wrestling and you're gonna see some feuds continue or culminate even on just like SmackDown. But the downside of a five, six match card, it is so restricted. Mi Chin and Chelsea Green are gonna have a dumpster match on SmackDown. That's hilarious and awesome. It actually ended up being uh, better than I expected. <laughs> Watching that match actually ended up being fun. I'm not gonna lie to you. At first I didn't give two Fs, but it actually ended up being fun. And it's cool that they are using them. They built some type of mini storyline there between these two ladies. So I can appreciate that. They need to continue to do that more when it's titles are not involved. Because now, if you do that, now more fans can be like, damn, I'm interested to see what Mi Chan is going to potentially do. Uh, man, she, she's in a heated feud with somebody right now. I'm interested to see. Now, that idea of, yeah, you know what? I wouldn't mind seeing her as a champion. She had a great feud with, you know, whoever she had a great feud with. I'm just using that as an example. You know what? I want to see her as head champion now. I wish or big car PLE. champion. The same for a lot of the men's feuds. Braun Breaker, Jey Uso. I wish that was happening at Bad Blood. I think down the road we could see Naomi and Bailey turn on each other and 
have a really cool rivalry That's, that together, could be good too because it wouldn't necessarily be for the title i would see that just culminating on smackdown now i know what some people will say ah you can't be satisfied by anything you just hate everything no it's really not true it's just an observation that i think women's side of things in wwe doesn't get the same attention and i think part of the problem or dilemma with all of this is that it can really hurt when you're trying to build more talent to the main tippy top of the title scene it's great having the superstars and the talent they have they are treated like a big deal they get on the wrestlemania cards they get on the big cards but beyond the very top of the women's divisions if you don't build anybody else up any more heels and stronger opponents for people like rhea ripley they start to just bulldoze through some of the talent and yeah. they're left middling about in the lower card mid card if they are even going to make it on tv kind yeah of the problems like are selena vega in lwo and they only catch l's no one takes her seriously she's awesome people love her love to see her but no one takes her seriously nobody this is why you have to have these other storylines as well for them to sink their teeth into because now you can build them up they start winning feuds now it makes sense for somebody to try to challenge Rhea. but right now if you want to be honest Outside of Rio on Monday Night Raw, she's the most viable person for the championship on Monday Night Raw. And it makes sense that now they add a Raquel into the mix to be Liv's muscle, essentially. But there's no other woman on the on the women's side of things on Monday Night Raw outside of a few people, you know what I'm saying? But they're in groups. We're not even just talking about individually. They're in groups and factions. That's different. Like, they could do something. And, you know, they've had plenty of times, especially when Shayna was by herself, to really do something, and they didn't, or it didn't land. So, you know, if you can build up these, these individuals, even outside of their factions, now you can start trying to put them against other top women in the, the division because they got multiple feuds under their belt that people somewhat care about and they were good or entertaining that didn't involve the title all right i think she can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rhea. there ain't too many on the roster that can do that it ain't other than the people that's at the top of the card that's feuding for titles so i've seen with cody Rhodes since winning the title completed a chapter of this epic story and then they just threw opponents at cody great matches but nothing really of consequence because uh -huh. we hadn't built up a lot of big challengers that would even feel like they have a chance to beat cody rose there we go it feels like they could beat rhea ripley smackdown yeah nia Jax, tiffany stratton bailey all of that naomi it's a little bit more interesting could go in a lot of different directions which is great but what do you see as the problem with wwe's women's divisions in your eyes what do they need to do to make it better hopefully with wwe going to netflix and moving things to three hours on smackdown could do a lot if you guys want to talk more about that and the changes we could see in hey this was a really good video good constructive criticism i'm gonna go ahead and give this a like and once again make myself disappear real quick hey go follow symbol wrestling he has 14k i'm gonna link down his uh, uh channel below as well as the uh, the pin top comment so that way you guys can go show him some love this is my first time checking out one of his vids and i like the idea of what he was saying and he made some very good points man the women the ladies if we want them to be taken more seriously especially if y'all plan on adding a mid card title to their division they need to be in other feuds outside of the main top feuds and kind of some of the stuff that they did with Chelsea and uh, and me Chin. You need to expound upon that, expound upon that, especially the ladies that you, you know, you have because granted. They do have a bright future in the women's division, especially with the new NXT talent that, that they've been acquiring. So, you know, you got the likes of uh, Julia, you know, coming in and, and everybody else that's that's coming in as well, you know, from the NXT ranks. You know, they, they're definitely going to have some, some nice talent to come in to these shows in the future. But at the same time, you don't want them to get lost in the shuffle, one. And two, you need to start making these people feel it's special and important and the best way you can do that put them in feuds outside of the title have them win matches and build that up so that way when it comes time to who's going to beat bianca who's going to beat 
Aria, who's going to beat, you know, Anaya Jax, these top individuals, who's going to beat them where it makes sense. You've already built up somebody. Oh, you know what? They had an amazing feud with so-and-so. Hey, put them in a title match. I think they deserve it. You you know, you, you kind of do that. So hopefully we can see that in the future going forward. We'll see. But y'all comment down below. Let me know. I'm asked the same question he asked, uh, you know, in his video. What do you guys think could benefit the women's division going forward? Would it be the mid card adding a mid card championship would it be adding more feuds for the ladies to get involved in outside of the main title picture scene what let me know what y'all think would be the best method to improve the women's division so that way more ladies seem more credible when it comes to potentially challenging some of these already superstars in the division like Aria ripley but i appreciate all love support row 2 150k appreciate y'all kicking it with me see you on the next one Peace.